Hello everyone and welcome back to my Danganronpa playthrough. This is episode 2 and if you watched the previous video, which I hope you did, if not, please go watch that first before watching this episode. And in the last episode, you know we talked to Kiyotaka, who is right here. And he's on the very far left, as you can see. I guess we'll go from left to right here. So let's go up next to Toko. Not that you'll remember my name anyway, but... And I'm going to say this now. She's one of my ultimate favorites in the first game. Actually, she's probably my favorite Danganronpa character of all time. Because she's very interesting. Um, I'm not going to spoil a lot here now, but there are some things you find out about her later in the game that that made her my favorite character, so. I'm Toko. Toko Fukawa. The ultimate writing prodigy. Yeah, she wrote a novel when she was 10 that got everyone talking and launched her literary career. Then two years ago, she released So Lingers the Ocean, a love story said to be her masterpiece. The book was such a hit with women that fishermen quickly shot to the top of every hottest men pole. Oh my. Despite her age, she's won countless literary prizes and all her books are instant bestsellers. Which is why she's come to be known as the ultimate writing prodigy. What else would you call such a young and talented author? But I figured she'd be a lovey-dovey type, with what with her masterpiece being romance and all. <laughs> What's your problem? Wh what? It's not polite to stare, you know. Stop staring! Stop staring at me like I'm some filthy creature! Filthy creature? No, I just thought... I know what you just thought. You just thought you'd never seen such an ugly woman. You just th thought it was so funny. N no, that's not what I was thinking at all. I'm telling you! Don't bother trying to lie to me! I know it's true, otherwise you... I know you can't stand looking at me. Anyway... W whatever I don't really care. I I'm used to it. Wow, talk about an inferiority complex. I was way off about what a successful author would be like. Okay, and then we move on to her. Hi, I'm Sayaka Maizona. I look forward to getting to know you. Also, I fixed the volume on here with the speakers and the mic, so hopefully you can hear me better, especially since I replaced mics, so let's hope this works. If not, I do apologize if you cannot hear me commentating on this. Whatever that means, whatever. Okay. The way she moves is positively mesmerizing, and that pleasant scent I can't quite place. Sayaka Maizono. When I saw her name in that thread online, frankly I was pretty surprised. She's in a pop group famous all across the country. In fact, she's their lead singer. As the ultimate pop sensation, she's in high demand to appear on TV and in magazines everywhere. But actually, that's not the only reason I was so surprised to find out she'd be going to the school. I'm sure she doesn't remember, but... Well, never mind. No matter how you slice it, she's really beautiful. Almost like a doll or something. <laughs> I'm not a doll, you know. I'm alive. Huh? Did you hear me? I... I'm psychic. Huh? <laughs> Kidding. I just have really good intuition. She's a sharp one. Hey, um... Huh? Hey, by any chance... Now what? Huh? Yeah, it must be. I'm sure of it. Hey, Makoto, did... Just hold on! Jeez, you guys! How long do you plan to waste our valuable time with this ridiculous back and forth? Sorry, just got carried away, I guess. You hear me? Self-introductions are for introducing yourself, not bumbling through a bunch of idle chit-chat. Um, you're right. Sorry. Sorry, Makoto. We can talk about this later. Sounded like Sayaka really had something she wanted to say. But it's not like we'll never see each other again. Like she said, we can talk later. Okay, and on to him. Yo, the name's Leon Kuwata. What's up? I recognize that name. Yep. He played for the National High School Champs as their cleanup hitter, the ultimate baseball star. And that superb athletic specimen is... 
You? Seriously? Huh? huh? What's wrong? N nothing. I'm just surprised. I figured with you being the ultimate baseball star and all. Break. What? Were you expecting some kid with a shaved head? Shaved head? No, I was just expecting more of a, you know, sporty looking traditional baseball player type. Well, Makoto, way to stereotype people. Am I, am I right or am I right? I mean, when I found that article and picture of you online, that's how you looked then. <laughs> what? Aw oh, man, you found that picture of me playing baseball. Seriously, I hate that picture. What the crap? That is not cool. This is so not cool. Seriously, I'm like mega embarrassed right now. I didn't have a choice, okay? Shaving your head like that is part of national championship regulations. I mean, seriously? But now I refuse to cut my hair, and I'm not gonna dye it back to normal either. Hey, listen. Actually, can I be totally honest with you? You know... I don't like baseball. Like, at all. I've never gone to a single practice. He's never practiced, and he was still this team star player? He's, he's some kind of prodigy. Yeah! And as soon as I got accepted here, I quit baseball for good. I have my own dream for the future. A dream for the future? My only path in life is getting into music. You can feel that star quality aura I have, right? You know what I mean. I'm gonna be a singer, so all I need is a songwriter and someone on guitar, and we're set. How cool is that? This new version of me that's chasing after my dream is like, super cool to the max! Hell yeah! <laughs> I can't believe what I'm hearing. I never imagined I'd hear something like that from a baseball star. And last in this group, we have him. I am Hifumi Yamada. What if you want to call me by my nickname? The Alpha and the Omega! I don't mind. Yeah, I, I, that's it for me for you. The ultimate fanfic creator. Mm -hmm. By the way, how much do you know about the world of 2D art? The world of 2D? <laughs> well, in that world, I'm well known and supremely well regarded as the ultimate fanfic creator. Mm -hmm. I once sold 10,000 copies of one of my fan comics at a school festival. The event has passed into legend. Hmm. Some of them didn't get it, of course, saying I tainted the event. How stupid can you be? That's too bad about them, but selling 10,000 copies like that is definitely pretty remarkable. However... The words of such idiots mean nothing to me. I am like Van Gogh, utterly unappreciated in my time. I am a soldier, serving night and day to destroy all mindless preconceptions about fan fiction. I'm sure if you were to observe my work, Mr. Nagy, you would comprehend its greatness immediately. For my work is filled with deepest meaning. What? What kind of meaning? Yes, indeed. It's about embracing our basest urges. I don't think I want to comprehend it. It's okay, Makoto, we don't blame you. Okay, now to talk to those five people over there. We'll start with her. Hey, ya! I'm Aoi Asahina. But my friends just call me Hina. What's up? <laughs> Aoi Asahina, she's been breaking records in every competition she's been in since elementary school. She's even been chosen as an upcoming Olympic cadet. She is without a doubt the ultimate swimming pro. The combination of her ability, appearance, and proportions has been widely discussed online. So, uh, what was your name again? Sorry, totally forgot. Makoto Nagi. <laughs> oh yeah, I knew it was something like that. No, not something like that. It is that. You got it. Sure, sure, got it. Here, I'll hammer it into my brain right now. Yeah. Makoto Nagi. Makoto Nagi. She just kept repeating my name and moving her finger across her palm like she was writing something. What are you doing? Huh? You don't know. If you want to remember someone's name, you've got to write it on your hand three times. I've never heard of that before in my life. Hey, by the way, how do you spell your last name? You spell it exactly like it sounds. Mm. Um. <laughs> well, I have no idea. <laughs> I'll just figure it out later and write it down. Okay. Anyway, glad to meet ya. Sh sure, same here. Well, one thing I learned is she's totally easygoing and bursting with energy. And next... Hello, nice to meet you. 
I'm Chihiro Fujisaki. The ultimate program. Sorry, I get kind of embarrassed whenever I introduce myself like this. <laughs> anyway, I hope we can get along. Same here. Nice to meet you. Huh? Maybe it's just my imagination, but have we met before? Um, I don't think so. We just met for the first time, which is why I said nice to meet you. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh yeah, good point. Sorry. You don't have to apologize for that. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Chihiro Fujisaki is known for all the cutting edge programs she's created. She's the ultimate programmer. She's also got that timid little bunny type thing going, which has endeared her to her le legion of fans. Um... Hey, so listen. Uh, I'm sorry. Huh? What are you apologizing for now? Um... Well, just cause you seem upset. You must be mad at me, right? No, not at all. I was just lost in thought about something. Huh? Lost in thought? Yeah, it had nothing to do with me being upset or anything. Thank you. Oh, that's good. I was afraid maybe you didn't like me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. I'm starting to understand why her fans are so into her. <laughs> Dots. Um, can I ask you your name? My name is Kyoko Kirigiri. Ah uh, yes, her talent remains a mystery. She's pretty tight-lipped, huh? Oh, but you know, her name didn't show up anywhere in that Hope's Peak Academy thread. And I did see that there were students like me, ones who didn't have any real identity or presence. Could this girl be one of them? Um, so what are you doing at the school? What? What's that supposed to mean? No, I just meant getting invited here means you're some kind of ultimate something, right? So what ultimate something are you? That doesn't matter. Why should I tell you? Huh? Well, I guess you don't have to tell me. <sighs> no, I don't have to tell you, so I'm not going to. Nothing about her turned up online, so I was thinking maybe she got picked by chance like me, but... Her face is like an iron mask. If she doesn't want to tell me anything, no point in asking. And next her. Hi! I'm Junko Enoshima. Charmed, I'm sure. Anybody will recognize this one. She's got more charm and presence than any high school girl in the country. She's the ultimate fashionista. I've seen her on tons of magazine covers, but... I feel like that doesn't quite match up to reality. What? Huh? Come on. Oh, are you talking about my cover photos and junk? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course. Those are totally photoshopped. Photoshopped? Yeah, you know. Edited to hell and back with, like, computers and junk? Oh, so they aren't real. What can we do? Come on, don't act so surprised. You're gonna make me all depressed. Totally! It's totally normal these days to photoshop the crap out of cover photos. If you're surprised by that, you'd be totally bl blown away by a certain dangerous little diva of ours. <laughs> they make the eyes and junk super big and tweak the skin so it looks all ceramic and porcelain. Oh. So many dreams are getting crushed today. And last up in this Name's group... Mondo Awada. Nice to fucking meet ya. Also, if a character curses, I'm just gonna, like, not say that word because I don't want to get booted off this channel here. So, I've seen other playthroughs of Donkanampa and, like, the the um, person playing the game doesn't do that either. But with the character saying the words, it's fine, apparently. So, I'm just gonna let them curse and I'll just read over it as something else or whatever. Anyways, but yeah. And he, he, he cusses a lot, so... Ultimate Biker Geek Leader. Mondo Wada, huh? Which means... He's the current leader of the largest biker gang in Japan. He's earned respect, even awe, from every gang in the country. He's the ultimate biker gang leader. Um... Nice to meet you, too! No. Hell yeah! I mean, I guess hell's okay. I've already said it on here anyway. 
I better be careful around him. One word, one wrong word, and I could wake up at the bottom of the sea. And that's okay. These four over here are the only ones left. I am Sakura Ogami. Ultimate martial artist. Oh jeez, I almost asked her if she was a guy. Poor Sakura. But it's okay, we love her anyway. The day I say something like that out loud is the day I get turned into a human meatball. But now I remember, she competed in a martial arts tournament in America and won, despite being a girl. She's the ultimate martial artist. She's fought in over 400 matches and never lost a single one. That thread also said a bit more about her. Some will call her Ogre. Some even think she's the closest known relative to the primates, the fame missing link. Poor Sakura. Any incoming Hope's Peak students who are reading this, let me warn you right now. If you value your life, avoid her at all costs. Oh, but that's not true. I mean, well, and that's not a big spoiler, but she's not scary. I mean, she's scary looking to some people, but like, when you learn more about her, it's just, yeah, she's not like that. Standing in front of her now, I don't think they were exaggerating about that. Hey. Hey, you. Uh, huh? Y yes? I snapped to attention without even realizing it. Then she started to poke and prod at my body. Um, what are you? I see. Muscular quality and quantity is right around that of an extremely ordinary high school student. Hmm. Hmm. What a shame. You're not at all fit to act as my training partner. I'm not sure that's such a shame for me. Okay, next! Oh god. Name's Byakuya Togami. This dork right here. The ultimate affluent progeny. Also, if I go silent for like a few seconds, it's because I'm drinking water. Because I don't want my voice to die out from playing this. So, or, you know, reading all the lines to you people, because I'm nice like that. Okay. Uh, hi, uh, nice to meet you. That's the most half-assed introduction I've ever heard. But there isn't really anything I can do about it. Even among the ultimate students, this one is special. Yeah, he's special, alright. <laughs> I, I like to make fun of this guy, just so you know. Byakuya Togami. He's the heir apparent of his family's massive financial conglomerate. He's already started managing business operations, and his own personal assets are, well, vast. His title of Ultimate Affluent Progeny is completely accurate. He's the definition of exceptional. That's everything I learned about him from that Hope's Peak thread online. Come on. We're done with introductions, right? How much longer are you going to stand there? Go away. I'm sick of looking at you. His aura says to me, you and I will never stand on the same level like a king in training. And next, we I'm have I'm Yasuhiro him. Hagakure. Hero for short. Take it easy, yeah? I know I will. And this is my other favorite character in this game. Yasuhiro Hagakure, known as Supernova in the psychic community, the trend-setting ultimate clairvoyant. Honestly, I don't really get all that fortune-telling stuff. It's pretty much beyond me. Still, I can't help wondering if there's any truth to it. Could it be? Ah, uh, okay, I give up. Huh? What happened? You're serious. I saw it. I looked right at it. Seriously, I totally saw it. Saw what? Hmm. A guardian angel with a crazy perm chasing after Bigfoot running off with a skyfish in its mouth. Yeah, he's, he's my other favorite, and he's a crazy one, so. And that guardian angel is your guardian angel. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But hey, we should totally grab some brewskis sometime and get real deep into Lemuria and its civilization. What? We're not allowed to drink. We're in high school. You know? Oh, I'm actually 21. I've been held back a few times. See, and well, it's a long story. A few times? Yeah, I bet that is a long story. And last but not least... I do not think we have been introduced. I am Celestia Ludenberg. Celestia Ludenberg? Huh? 
<laughs> Lutenberg, it is my name, but if you don't mind, I would prefer for you to call me Celeste. Um, you are Japanese, right? Huh? Uh, of course. Why do you ask? If you don't mind, could you tell me your real name? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you are talking about. Celestia Lutenberg is my real name. But as I mentioned, I would much rather call you call me Celeste. She's polite, but pretty forceful at the same time. I don't think she wants to say any more about it. I guess the rumors in that thread were right about her. The self-styled Celestia Ludenberg, she's the ultimate gambler who's never lost a bet. Other than her obvious love of gothic bolita clothes, everything about her is wrapped in a veil of lies. They say she entered and won an underground gambling tournament, earning the title Queen of Liars. She totally cleaned out the other players, taking their life savings and laughing as she did it. That's Celeste. <laughs> I look forward to getting to know you better. <laughs> that smile is beyond deceptive. I'd better watch myself around her. And with that, all the introductions are done. Hmm, even though they're called Ultimate, they each have their own individual sort of, uh, something. <laughs> okay, time to get down to business. There, this is no time to stand around making friends like a bunch of dull-eyed baboons. Oh, that's true. I think someone said something about a bigger problem or something. What was that about? Um, listen. Oh, well, you see... Uh, um, Makoto, you said a bunch of stuff happened and then you were just asleep, right? Well, the same is true for all of us. What? Seriously? I mean, seriously? Just after each of us got to the main hall, we lost consciousness. And when we came to, we were somewhere here in the school. That's what happened to you, right? But that's just weird that every one of us would get knocked out like that. Piece of shit! Exactly! That's why we're all freaking out! <clears throat> and that's not the only thing. You saw where all the windows in the classes and hallways were, right? <clears throat> But instead of normal glass windows, it was a bunch of big metal plates. What's that about? Are you for real? Plus, all my stuff's missing, even my cell phone. Um, yeah, you're right. I haven't seen my PDA anywhere, either. <clears throat> and then there's the main hall here. The front exit is completely blocked by some giant metal hatch. What does this mean? But there wasn't anything like that when I first got here. What the heck? What's it doing here? Maybe we got caught up in some kind of, like, you know, crime or something? Is it, like... What? Like, a kidnapping? You think maybe someone grabbed us and hauled us off and we're not actually at school? Hey, come on! Come on! Don't think like that! Cheer up! I bet this is all just part of the school's orientation procedure. You know? Yeah, I'm sure of it! So I'm just gonna take it easy for a little bit. I see. Oh. So you think they wanted to do something to surprise us? What the hell? Huh? Well, if that's all it is, it's nap time for me. You know what I mean. I was up way too late last night, so I could use a little shut-eye. I could feel everyone's tension evaporating. But then, it began. Here we go! Oh no, what could it be? Ahem, ahem, testing, testing, mic check, one, two, this is a test of the school broadcast system. Am I on? Can everyone hear me? Okay, well then. The voice, <clears throat> sorry about that, the voice seemed totally out of place. It was so playful, so completely unconcerned, and that odd shape, that is definitely not a human. I couldn't help but feel a deep, unnerving dread at the sound of it. It was like hearing someone laugh at the scene of an accident. Uh, to all incoming students, I would like to begin the entrance ceremony at... right now! Please make your way to the gymnasium at your earliest convenience. Oh, well, it's time to meet the headmaster. That's all. I'll be waiting. Or is he? No, I'm just teasing with you guys. What the hell was that just now? Goodbye. 
Well then, if you'll excuse me. Hey! Uh, hey! What? You're gonna take off just like that? Could it be? Oh yeah, now I get it. This whole thing was just to get us all pumped for the entrance ceremony. <laughs> Man, thank God it was all a joke. I'd be totally freaked if this was real. You know? All right, guess I'll head up to. Wonder what they got planned for us next. <sighs> Damn, I was totally looking forward to that nap too. Why'd they have to go and kill the mood? Huh? Well, wait for me. I want to go with you. <laughs> That is that, then. I will see you all there. Anyway... Not that anyone cares, but I'm gonna go too. Everyone took off for the gym, but I was frozen where I stood. That uneasy feeling I'd had before, I couldn't get it out from my mind. And it looked like I wasn't the only one. Uh, um... This... this doesn't seem right. This is bad. <laughs> yeah, that announcement was totally weird. However... Maybe, but just staying put doesn't mean we'll be safe. Besides, aren't you guys just a little bit curious to find out what's going on around here? I see. If we do not move forward, we learn nothing. The only choice is to push ahead. Uh, I guess she's right. But still, I'm kinda... No, really nervous. We don't have a choice. We have to go. They said to go to the gym, right? And save. Okay, I'm going to stop this video here. Mainly because I w uh, mainly because I want to check and make sure that you can hear my voice and the game without one louder than the other to the point where you can't hear me. I made some adjustments to the settings in the program as well as the webcam mic. Hopefully this works. If not, I will go back. And so I'll save here just in case I have to redo that video. But hopefully I don't. Anyways, thank you for joining me for part two or episode two of my Danganronpa playthrough, and I hope you guys are enjoying the game so far. If this is your first time checking out Danganronpa, if you've already played the game or watched other playthroughs of it but have decided to watch my playthroughs, thank you for joining me, and hopefully you're as big of a fan of this game as I am because it's become one of my favorite series in games. So thank you all for joining, and I'll see you guys later.